Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg. Today I'm not making any candy, but I'm going to talk about equipment I made to make the most requested reproduction candy I've ever gotten. Now, I've made candy before that I've never tasted. Made black currant. That was interesting. I did get to track down some black currant jam first, but I had to build that from a flavor profile I didn't know, and I apparently got it on Target because I heard descriptions and I got it. Lavender was harder and violet was harder. For violet, I actually went to Paris and tried violet candies there. And that was great because I got to go to Paris. But there's something that I've been getting emails for for almost as long as this YouTube channel's been around. I think we've been getting them for eight years now. People asking me if I could bring back a discontinued flavor. And that would be this. These silly cans of candy, if they still have candy in them, and you don't know if they survived or not because 10 years is a very long time for a candy, and I think they stopped making it uh, 12 years ago, these suckers go for over $100 a tin on eBay, sometimes substantially more than that. Now, so I'm going to try to recreate a flavor I've never tried, and I'm going to try to do it right. It's going to require some equipment I don't already have, and it's going to require some science that I do. Now, I've never actually tried it, and this isn't a can of it. I just got an empty can. I was actually trying to figure out how big the originals were. I saw photos, but the photos were just cans floating in space, and I couldn't figure out how big the pieces were. Now, the pieces were done on a standard raspberry-shaped roller, which has been around since the 1800s. What size, what shape, I didn't know, but they were raspberries. They were basically a basic shape, but with that can, I was able to put an image of that can with the measurements of the can next to a photo of the product with candy in it, and it allowed me to calculate the size of the raspberries, which happened to be smaller than the raspberry rollers I have, because I've got a raspberry roller that makes a nice piece of candy, and this is it. And this is not quite the tangerine candy. This is, I believe, generation two of the test of the candy, and we've been going through a bunch of them right now. Actually, quite a few just got mailed off to our beta testers, who are uh, people who follow us on our podcast to occasionally get free candy, I guess. The goal here is to make a clean room reproduction of this candy. I'm not trying to copy the candy from the candy itself. I'm trying to copy it from the descriptions of those of you out there. So if you want to put what type of reaction you had when you tried tangerine sours back in 2010 or before, I'd love to see them in the comments of this video. Fortunately, this can had an ingredients list on the back. The ingredients list is sugar and corn syrup, the basis of all hard candy, citric acid and malic acid, I'll get back to the acids in a minute, natural flavor, carnauba wax, red 40 and yellow 5. Now, red 40 and yellow 5 is a standard orange mixture, and I feel that I've captured the same color. That's easy for me to do. I've seen photos. The natural flavor is assuming that it's actually tangerine flavor, and a lot of natural flavors are natural, but aren't from the fruit in question, because the fruit often doesn't make a flavor that can take the heat of the hard candy, but most citruses do. So I have tracked down pure tangerine oil. That's a trick in its own right. But now we get to the sour, because these things are sours. It says so in their name, tangerine sours, and it has malic acid and citric acid in it. And the acids for foods are interesting. So there are a lot of types of edible acids out there. There's things like um, benzotic acid, which I'd love to play with. Those are found in cranberries and plums. There's cafetonic acid, which you find in coffee. It creates the bitter in coffee. Tannic acid, which you'll find in tea and some wines. Oxalic acid, which is in pepper and chocolate and tea as well. Vinegar gets acidic acid. Tartaric acid, which you find in cream of tartar, which was used in candies back in the day to do invert sugar. I guess acidic acid was also, but uh, it was a way of keeping the candy from crystallizing besides corn syrup. Didn't work perfectly and made the candy taste a little weird, but, you know, that comes out of grapes and pineapples and potatoes, and you never think of potatoes as sour, but there's acids in them. And then you have malic and citric acid. Malic acid was found almost exclusively, commonly, in apples. It's what makes apples tart. And citric acid obviously comes from citrus fruits like oranges and lemons, but it also is found in just about everything else. Bananas, strawberries, things you never would think have an acid. 
have citric acid, and citric is a really pleasant acid for things that are sweet. Malic acid doesn't work with everything, but it is much more sour, and it also tastes longer for the tongue to react to, and that's what I think they're playing here. You got the citric acid, which makes it sour immediately, and then you have the malic acid, which makes it more sour, but it takes time, and that's what we're trying to duplicate here. Now, one of the descriptions that everybody has said, including a couple who was just here in the store a few moments ago, is when the candy hit your mouth, you got an immediate sour. And that tells me that citric acid was on the outside. Now, when we make candy through the press, all the acid is pressed on the inside. Even if we sprinkled it on the surface before putting it through the press, it gets pressed under the top layer of sugar. Or it reacts with the air and stops being an acid by the time you eat it. In any event, it's in the candy. So you have to suck through the outer layers. You start with sweet, and then you go to sour. Our acid drops are like this. But if you're going to put sour on the outside, you need to use a different technique. And that technique comes from the final ingredient in this, carnauba wax. Now, carnauba wax is a hard wax that's made from a palm tree in Brazil. It's a common candy making thing. It's applied hot over candy. But the candy has to tumble, and that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a panning machine I built. I built it out of a couple of industrial salad bowls for restaurants, a KitchenAid, some lumber that was lying around in a scrap box, and parts, believe it or not, from a pasta extruder for the KitchenAid that I wasn't using. You see, I love to make pasta on my KitchenAid, but I always make linguine. The remnants of the spaghetti extruder are now on this machine. So here's the machine spinning like a um, cement mixer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the candy in here. And when the candy is tumbling and rotating, we're gonna pour on it the melted wax. And the melted wax is gonna coat the candy. And we're also gonna put on it citric acid. And the melted wax is gonna pick up the citric acid, stick it on the outside of the candy so when you stick it in your mouth, you're gonna get that super sour immediately. I'm still not sure that this is exactly what they did. I mean, I've got a lot of questions. Do they tumble the acid and then add the wax with the candy? Do they put the wax on first and then add the citric acid? But we'll find out soon enough. In the meantime, I've got this device built, it's working solidly, and it's easily gonna take 25 pounds of candy. And yes, it is held together with binder clips, but it's working, and that's what's important. Now here's where the fun comes in we're going to be making a can of candy because this needs to come in a can and it's actually been very hard to find a can the right size for it but the can is missing something it's going to have an ingredients list on the back which we're taking care of because that's basically specified by federal law on the front we need some original artwork now i'm an artist and i could draw it but i thought it might be fun to get you out there to come up with the artwork or at least the artwork ideas and send it to us. And you can send it to our podcast email address, which is podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, at pd.net. That's podcast at pd.net. Now, we do not want it to look like this because we're not making this. We're making something that brings back the idea of that. We're, on the other hand, we've gotten a lot of cool fan art over the years, like this, and this, and this, and we love it. So here are the specs of the art. And we'd like you to stay within it. We can have a little irregular edge and stuff like that. That can be cut out no problem. Modern sticker machines can handle it. But we're going to have a little contest here. And the winner gets their artwork on this candy if they want to. And, of course, we're going to take the usual caveat that if we don't like any of the artwork or we think it's inappropriate or anything, we're just going to make our own art. But it could be fun. And I think we need something original, something that screams tangerine. Something that says our web address, pd.net, and something that says lo both lofty pursuits and public displays of confection. It can be reminiscent of the art that we've used. It can be something new and original. It can be fun. But I think that's what I want. I want fun. And hopefully you can help us with this. So try your own can art. And let's put it on the can. Here. I'll put it here. All this information is going to be in the description below, uh, including to whatever links I can think of if there's any appropriate links. But we're going to try to recreate this flavor, and we're currently doing it with our beta testers from our podcast. So thank you guys who listen to our podcast, and thank you for volunteering to help. We really appreciate it. And, of course, if you like our videos, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and you'll get the next one in the series. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you come to Tallahassee, you can see us in person right here at Lofty Pursuits.
Exciting. Well, this may take a little longer than we hoped, so you can get the candy that we make now at www.pd.net, and this stuff will be ready when it's ready.